boy, that's a lot of games. Wow. Does the world truly need yet another one? Brigadoon is a two-player abstract strategy board game which typically takes between 15 and 30 minutes to play. But that 15 to 30 minutes is jam-packed with plot twists, surprises, and boatloads of chaotic mayhem. To win the game, be the first admiral to claim two treasure chests. Now, let's go through a quick boot camp to explain the mechanics. Each turn, you will perform actions with all your ships at sea. There are five questions to ask for each ship prior to performing those actions. Let's break these down a bit. 1. Should I change the wind now? You must change the wind once, but only once during your turn. Changing the wind cannot be your last action. Therefore, it must happen prior to performing actions on one of your ships at sea. 2. Should I repair or sail? Choose a ship in your fleet which has not already made repairs or sailed, and either make repairs or sail according to the wind direction. 3. Can I attack? If that ship sails and lands orthogonal to other ships, attack those ships in any order you decide. If those attacks result in ships landing next to other ships, follow through on those attacks as well, again in any order you decide. Continue in this way until no ship on the board is still orthogonal to any other ship on the board. 4. Can I interact with treasure chests? If that ship or any ship you subsequently attacked collides with a treasure chest in its path, interact with that treasure chest as you see fit. If that chest is in the shallows, bump it or run aground on it, or bump it and then run aground on it. If that chest is in open water, bump it or sink it, or bump it and then sink it. And finally, five, can I claim a treasure chest? Again, claiming two treasure chests is the goal of the game. There are two different ways a ship can claim a treasure chest. One, by sailing onto a chest on an island, or two, by being blasted onto a chest on an island. Either way, a ship that claims a chest is no longer a ship at sea, but is now a ship in port, and is no longer required to perform actions for the rest of the game. However, a ship in port may abandon its treasure if you decide doing so is strategically useful. I really like how um, whenever you think you lost the game, you was that fun? Yeah, that was only because you beat me. Although you thought I won. This is very near the end of the game which Joseph was referring to. Joseph had already claimed one treasure chest in a previous turn. But on this turn, he had already changed the wind and only had two ships left to maneuver. And one of those ships had no masts. With a southwest wind, his chances of winning were looking grim. It just so happens, a southwest wind was exactly what I needed to claim my two chests and declare victory. Joseph paused for a moment to consider his options. And then, he saw it. He decides to attack one of his own ships. He blasts that ship clear across to the other side of the board, where it lands in a space orthogonal to his ship with no masts. This attack gives Joseph his unexpected win. Brigadoon is an innovative game because it's one of the only games I've played where attacking yourself is frequently a good idea. For example, you might find a clever combination where at the cost of damaging one of your own ships lightly, may damage multiple of your opponent's ships heavily. In this scenario, Noah sails the blue fleet, but the green fleet is about to claim a treasure chest. Noah seizes on a clever opportunity to attack his opponent 
and prevent it from claiming that chest. By blasting his own ship into a maelstrom, Noah sets off a shattering chain reaction. Notice how the ship blasted into the maelstrom has not yet taken its turn. True, it has moved, but it has not yet sailed of its own accord. So, after resurfacing, it sails into position and fires away. This moment of self-sacrifice is precisely the opportunity you must be on the lookout for in Rigadoon. Rigadoon is complex in mechanics, yet simple in pieces. So it's actually very quick to pick up and learn. Because it has a, a small number of pieces, it's easily played out in public. You can travel with it. To further punctuate Kira's observations, there is an even simpler version. True, it is certainly more fun to play with the ships and their masts, but doing so is not always practical. On such occasions, bring along the travel dice version of the game. The number of masts is managed simply by turning the dice to the proper side, given the situation. One of my favorite parts about Rigadoon is the wind. I really like how the gameplay is driven and shaped by this random and natural force, and it always surprises me how quickly the tides can turn, provided you have some favorable wind. What I love about playing Rigadoon is how unpredictable it can be, just like the weather here in the Rockies. What makes the game so innovative, in my opinion, is how quickly things can change. Just the change of a wind, a little bit of luck, and some strategy can introduce large amounts of chaos into the game. Eli and Jay both agree. The chaos factor in Rigadoon is greatly augmented by the randomly changing winds. In this game, the wind can greatly diminish the gap between the novice and the experienced player. Leveling the playing field in this way makes for exciting and dramatic moments. And even though this is an abstract strategy game, it has been designed with a dramatic arc in mind. In some ways, Rigadoon is a dramatic arc generator where no two games are alike. Careful consideration has gone into the mechanics so that as the game progresses, the tension builds. Oliver describes how this drama unfolds. The way you command your four ships changes throughout the stages of the game. So often in the beginning, there's a lot of skirmishing and close quarter stuff that happens in the shallows. And then later in the game, you're often more concerned with traveling great distances with the ships. From sailing your first ship to claiming your last treasure chest, Rigadoon's changing winds and changing objectives will surprise and engage players each time it's played. But why exactly do we call the game Rigadoon? In the 17th century, a Rigadoon was a lively dance for four couples. Whereas Rigadoon, the board game, is a lively battle for four pairs of ships. And, since much of the gameplay involves choreographing those ships, it seemed a fitting name. I'm John Glenn, the primary designer of Rigadoon, though considerable credit goes to friends and family who have tested Rigadoon hundreds of times and have provided critical feedback. Thank you for your time, and while you're here, please feel free to post questions and comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the shallows. Until then, bon voyage.